Hello, welcome to Anselm Griffith's vocational series in MATLAB tutorials. Today, the essential command we're looking at is quiver, and quiver is used either to plot a vector. And a vector, as you all know, would have magnitude and uh, direction. So we're going to describe a function, we're going to get the, the derivative, the dy dx or ds dt, which would give us the velocity, and then we're going to get the 2s dt squared, or its equivalent, and we're going to get the acceleration, or we're going to get the plot. So what we're trying to look at today is some basic differentiation and quiver and plotting. So, uh, we're just, so I have it there, there's my table of contents that I did in a publish command, and here is my function here, r of t is 2 cos t, comma 3 sin t, so in other words, x comma y. So, and this will go around in 0 to 2 pi or 0 to 360 degrees. For those that don't know here, CLC clears the screen, clear all, closes any figures, um, sorry, clears the workspace and close all, clears any figures. So I'm going to create do and then 0 to 2 pi in with 200 steps. And there's my x vector, and there's my y vector. So I'm going to get 2 cos 0, 2 cos 0.01, 2 cos 0.02, or whatever it is. And y is 3 sine 0, 3 cos 0, sorry, 3 sine 0, 3 sine 0.01, radians 3 sine 0.02, or whatever it is. So I'm just going to draw my first figure here. I have a fairly ignorant looking graph. What do I mean by ignorant? There's no title. There's no label on the x-axis, there's no label on the y-axis. And uh, the grid on will give me these dots here. And the axis equal, obviously, as the name implies, will make the x and y spacing equal. Now, slightly improved the graph above. Uh, we do the x label, we get that down there. And y label, we get there. And then we get the title there. So we now are going to get uh, the differentiation of the function. Now, I slight criticism myself. I could have used symbolic um, MATLAB and got to use the diff command to get the differentiation of the function. But by hand, the diff of that is this. Okay, And if you can't do that by hand, well, yeah, to be honest, I'm not going to bother because I have to assume that you know some sort of basic differentiation, and this isn't the differentiation class. So I assume you know how to do that. Okay, so we're going to get a new figure. We're going to plot x and y as above. We're going to put the grid on in equals x as I described, and then what I'm going to do here is. I'm going to get vector points every 45 degrees of pi over 4 radians. So tt 0 to 2 pi in steps of pi over 4. I'm going to get the x coordinates and I'm going to get the y coordinates here. I look at the workspace in a minute. Well, when I have this done. So how do I get the vx and the vy? Well, I've got the uh, velocity up there minus 2 sine 2t, two and the y component is 3 cos t, so there we are. That's my vector at the x, that's my vector at the y. So that's my um, basic um, plot of the, original, um, of the original function. And now here's the command. Hold on, that keeps that figure in place, doesn't create a new one. And I'm going to use quiver. So I'm using xx, yy, so they're the original vectors, and their vx is the um, the velocity of the x, and vy is the velocity of the y. And as I mentioned there, the scaling is zero, just there. Okay, uh, have I got that? Oh, and there's the graph down there. So though we ha the blue line is the original one, and the v, remember we got the v by a differentiation issue. Well, we just assumed you could do it by hand. So there is the velocity there. There's the velocity there. Velocity there. And you can see we're getting the velocity every pi over 4 
are every 45 degrees as we go around. Okay. Now, not that apparent from there, but uh, as I mentioned before, the quiver command gives the vector, and the vector has direction and magnitude. So I wanted to get the magnitude of these lines. So in other words, I wanted to get the length of uh, each vector at 0, 45, 90, etc. So how did I do that? That's on this line here. The length of each vector. So this is quite difficult. I wanted to multiply Vx by itself, you know, Vx1 by Vx1, Vx2 by Vx2, Vx3 by Vx3. And in MATLAB, where I've highlighted there, it's dot multiply. Corresponding element by corresponding element. If I said Vx multiplied by Vx, it would probably give me an error, because it will try to do matrix multiplication. So dot multiply is corresponding element by corresponding element. And then... I used fprintf here, so format print, and this is a little difficult if you're very new to MATLAB. Percent %s, percent %s, so that means two strings. There's the two string, length string and rod string. Length string is the length of the vector. And how did I get the length of the vector? Um, no, sorry. Length string is just a title length of the vector, and rad string is just radians. So this line here, will give me this line here. Didn't quite tabulate properly, but that's okay. And then I set up a for loop here. And each time I went around the for loop, I got the length of vector 1, then the length of vector 2, then the length of vector 3, then the length of vector 4. And TT, you know, that's the 0, 45, 90, or 0, pi over 4, pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, pi, etc. radians, and just in case you, there's a mistake here, I got them to the first decimal place, so 0.1f float, so it's only going to, so I'm not getting 3.14 here, for instance, I just did the 3.1. So, what I was trying to say is, the length there, the length of that velocity, right, That'll give me the magnitude, that's 3. So, and likewise, at pi over, over here, that's 3 units long. So it's 3 units long along the x-axis and along the y-axis. Um, there we are, that's uh, pi over 4. So we're getting 2 there. So the length there is 2, and the length there is 2. So the velocity is greater there, is greatest there and there, and it's at a minimum there and there. Okay. Now we want to do the acceleration, and I assume you know the acceleration is the rate of change of the velocity. Again, I could have used the diff command to get the, uh, the differentiation of the velocity, but by hand, it's minus 2 cos t by comma minus 3 sine t. I got the argument, I got the acceleration of the x component, component, and I plot it all over again. So, figure, new figure, new diagram, plot x, y, hold on, there's the differentiation vectors, there's the acceleration vectors, and so we've seen this before. So you see, w there's the acceleration vectors in red. Okay. So we are right with that. So they're accelerating, and this vaguely, believe it or not, only well, vaguely represent would say be typical of the Earth going around the sun. So the the Earth would be more or less the blue line. The sun is the center of the universe, literally. So remember, there are two things that play with the Earth going around the sun. Uh, the the lateral velocity is tend to throwing the the object away. So in other words, if you let if this was a piece of string and you let go, the Earth would start flying down here. 
But keeping that in check is the acceleration towards the sun. So the two things balance each other, and so the uh, the whole system, the whole milk. Well, I was going to say milk anyway, but the whole planetary system is kept in check. That's the published file. There's the script. I'm not going to go through the script again because I just published it. It was just easier for me to show you the student there. Just going slowly at it. And there's my comment at the end. So one or two bits might be a little awkward, uh, especially the dot multiply, I, su I suspect. And for new students, uh, this for loop, I suspect, would cause a little bit of problem. But the thing will work. You don't need, if you don't get line 73 to 75, what I'm really hoping is that you understand. Thanks very much for listening. Hope it helps a little.